Here's a problem that trips up more students than you might expect. What is negative x squared when x equals 3? Now, this might seem straightforward, but there's a subtle detail here that makes all the difference. The heart of this problem comes down to understanding two very different expressions. We have negative x squared, and then we have the quantity negative x, all squared. These look nearly identical, but they're actually quite different mathematically. So let's start by looking at where people typically go wrong. The mistake usually comes from a seemingly reasonable assumption. The mistake is assuming that negative x is squared is the same thing as the quantity negative x squared. But these are actually two completely different expressions. If you follow this incorrect reasoning, you'd substitute 3 for x, get negative 3 squared, which gives you 9. But this is actually solving a different problem entirely. To get this right, we need to be very careful about the order of operations. The key insight is understanding how tightly different operators bind to their operands. Here's the crucial point. Exponents have higher precedence than the negative sign, so the exponent only applies to the x, and then the negative sign applies to the entire result. Now let's work through this step by step, following the proper order of operations. So negative x squared should be read as the negative of x squared. The squaring happens first, then we apply the negative sign. Next, we substitute 3 for x. Notice that we're squaring just the 3, not negative 3. 3 squared gives us 9. The negative sign is still waiting outside, ready to be applied. And finally, we apply that negative sign to get negative 9. That's our answer. Now, if you want to see why these expressions are fundamentally different, Let's look at this algebraically. When we have parentheses, the negative x becomes negative 1 times x. When we square this entire quantity, we get negative 1 squared times x squared, which simplifies to just x squared. But without parentheses, only the x gets squared. The negative sign stays outside and gets applied to the result. So we can see that these expressions are genuinely different. One always gives you a positive result, the other always gives you a negative result. Let's double check this understanding by trying a negative value. What if x equals negative 3? So we're setting x equal to negative 3. For our original expression, we substitute negative 3 for x. We square negative 3 to get 9, then apply the outer negative sign to get negative 9. For the parentheses version, negative of negative 3 gives us positive 3. Squaring that gives 9. So even with negative inputs, these expressions behave differently. Here's the key pattern to remember. Negative x squared always gives you negative or zero results, while the quantity negative x squared always gives you positive or zero results. Now, perhaps the clearest way to see this difference is to graph both functions. Let's see what these look like on a coordinate plane. The red curve shows y equals negative x squared. Notice how it opens downward. This makes sense since we're always getting negative values. The green curve shows y equals the quantity negative x squared. As we proved earlier, this is actually just y equals x squared in disguise. So we get the familiar upward opening parabola. At x equals 3, the red curve gives us negative 9, while the green curve gives us positive 9. The visual completely confirms our calculation. Before we finish, you might wonder, does this same principle apply to other exponents? With 0 as the exponent, the difference is even more stark. Negative x to the 0 power gives negative 1, but the quantity negative x to the 0 power gives positive 1. But with odd powers like 3, both expressions end up giving the same result because the negative sign gets preserved either way. So these expressions only agree when you have odd positive exponents. For even powers or zero, those parentheses make all the difference. The main lesson here is that order of operations really matters. When you're not sure, use parentheses to make your intention crystal clear. Thanks for watching.
If this helped clarify the difference between these expressions, consider giving this video a like and subscribing for more mathematical insights.